Um, we're going to move to Henry James, who's Jones. VP. What? Jones. Jo oh, I'm sorry, Jones. <laughs> Forgive me. Henry Jones. Oh, I'm thinking of the author. <laughs> Henry Jones, VP of the board, chair of investment committee of CalPERS. And of course, CalPERS has been a leader in this area. And my question for Henry is, what de-risking considerations and approaches do you focus on when considering issue global infrastructure mandates? And what are your lessons learned? And what can you tell us? OK, thank you, Barbara. And good afternoon. I, is it afternoon yet? Yep. I know that I'm going to make my comments very short, because I know that the only thing standing between us and in lunch is, is our comment. So we will move it along pretty fast here. Uh, let me provide some background information on CalPERS uh, uh, so that we can understand the context of, uh, of our investment strategies. Uh, CalPERS administers uh, pension benefits for 1.8 million public employees in the, the state of California. And s over 600,000 of those members are retirees. Uh, our uh, uh, assets currently is right at $315 billion. Uh, the board structure, we have 13 members on the board. Six of us are elected. I'm one of the elected members elected by the retirees. And then there are four constitutional officers, such as the state treasurer, state uh, controller. And then the governor appoints two members to, to the board, and the state legislature re, uh, appoints one member to, to the board. So you could see that it's a variety of backgrounds and uh, beliefs that comes to make these decisions uh, uh, at CalPERS. However, we do have a, a professional investment staff of over 250 individuals uh, that give you some contacts of what the uh, strategies are, are and who's making the decisions with respect to the investment strategies. And uh, we have a CIO and uh, the board also has a uh, consultant uh, that reports directly to the board. Uh, we have three different consultants that report directly to the board, one of which is an infrastructure consultant. So all of the activities surrounding infrastructure the board's consultant on infrastructure also opines on recommendations that are coming to it from staff uh, regarding infrastructure. So let me, uh, the, the investment approach has, is, is to be studied and, and managed with care because we will be paying pension benefits for decades. Uh, we invest for the long term. We ride the ups and downs of the market and the economic cycles. And as a result, the investment office is very focused on reducing, reducing costs, re risk, and complexities of our investments. Our primary responsibility as a pension fund is to pay benefits. It's plain and simple. And that's why we invest in infrastructure, because we need to have monies for years to come to make those payments to our members going forward. Uh, these investments are part of CalPERS's infrastructure program, which the goal is to hold ownership of essential assets that provide predictable returns with moderate long-term inflation protection. Our team targets stable, defensive investments within a variety of sectors, including power and energy, renewables, water and waste, transportation, and telecommunications. Within these sectors, our team is looking at a few things. First, we look for the investments that provide stable cash flow. Secondly, we strive for diversification of equity uh, risk, given that stocks make up over 50% of our uh, total fund. CalPERS does not want to be overinvested in any asset class, nor any segment of asset classes. Uh, we look at infrastructure projects on a case-by-case -case basis. And while diversification help us to ride the economic cycles for long-term successes, we also need to reduce risk by bring, building on past success, successes with proven models that have shown strong returns. As a result, we tend to favor brownfield or existing investments that have a track record 
of, of operations and have shown strong returns. There are several tools that we used in managing this risk at, at CalPERS. First, having the right partners to execute the investment strategy is key to our success. We strive to find trusted and like-minded partners with appropriate sector and local expertise. We also look at our invest alignment with our partners. In other words, do they have skin in the game? And adequate compensation is a very important issue also for us. Second, the use of financial leverage. History has shown that excessive use of leverage can result in underperforming infrastructure investments. We believe in prudent uh, uh, leverage and acts as an enhancer as opposed to a driver of returns. And that's demonstrated by when we first started our infrastructure strategies almost six years ago now, the policy that the board adopted for risk for leverage was only 20, 25 percent. But now, because we have more experience and success in this, in this space, now that leverage is up to 65 percent. So it's a moving target as we become more and more uh, familiar and uh, understand what we're investing in, we change the policy going forward. And this is both with the recommendations of staff and also the concurrence of our board consultant. Lessons learned. There are a lot of challenges when it comes to investing in infrastructure. Starting with the fact that opportunities are unpredictable. In a given period, there may be a few investable opportunities, while in subsequent periods, there may be many. The, <clears throat> for example, government, privatization, market structure, and asset valuations determine investment flows. Another particular challenge in the infrastructure space is the diverse nature of opportunity set. For example, while investing in one roadway might be a perfect fit, but right down the road, another roadway project may not may be a bad fit because it has its own characteristics when you're talking about investing in these uh, areas. So the repeatable framework is are hard to find. Closing as a leader in the pension and investment field, I encourage all of us to be thought leaders to propose new ways to move more infra infrastructure projects forward and to be creative in our partnerships. And there is no time like the present time to co collaborate and share success stories to not only support Africa's infrastructure goals, but infrastructure projects all over the world. So thank you for having me. Well, I, I'm really fascinated by many of the points you have. But in the interest of time, maybe we can talk later. Okay. It's the lessons learned. But I think this is where, in terms of sharing, it would be great to expand our way to be able to mm -hmm. share this stuff, because mm -hmm. clearly you have a lot for everyone to learn from. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor.